Okay. Got it. So, Julie, take take it over. All right. Well, thank you. It's a real pleasure to be visiting with you all this Friday afternoon. Thanks for taking the time. Um, uh, you know, it's Stanislaus Audubon has been one of the um, most influential and longest advocates for conservation in Stanislaus County. I mean, you, you guys, this this institution has done a lot. So um, I feel like River Partners owes you a debt of gratitude for setting such an incredible uh, foundation for good conservation in this area. Um, so I am reporting to you, I'm Zooming to you tonight uh, from Yuba City, uh, which is where I live, but I spend my time in various River Partners offices, whether that's in Chico or Calusa or Modesto or Sacramento, and very occasionally I get to go down to San Diego, um, where, we, where we do work as well in Southern California. So um, today I might look a little flush because today I was actually at Dos Rios all day out in the sun, um, touring around, driving around, checking on things and visiting with partners. And it was a blast. That place is just so special and beautiful. Um, <clears throat> so um, a little bit about me. I studied forestry, not birds. <laughs> you know, they always say there's like plant people and then there's like, you know, animal people. I'm a plant person. Um, so you'll see that in the talk tonight. I tried to put a lot of birds in there, but you know, a lot of birds to me is not a lot of birds to you. So please, you know, stop. I welcome interjections, questions, and additions um, to whatever I'm talking about. If you guys feel that there's interesting stuff you want to add um, to the talk. I think everybody here has spent a good amount of time with birds in Stanislaus County. So you probably know a lot about what I'm going to be talking about today. Um, what else can I share with you? Um, uh, I've been at River Partners for about 15 years now. Um, and I started in our Modesto office and spent a lot of time in our Modesto office, about 10 years in our Modesto office. Um, so I uh, participated in kind of the whole development of the Dos Rios project from the start in deep partnership with the Tuolumne River Trust and Patrick Copel there. Um, and um, I'm going to talk a little bit about the history, but I just wanted to say that while while I was working out of that Modesto office, we were living. My husband and I were living in Merced, and um, as a Bay Area native, I never knew how amazing the Central Valley was until we moved to Merced. And I thought, holy cow, this is what we were thinking was kind of like drive-through country, you know? Like this, this is not something that ever registered on my radar as a kid. Uh, fell in love with the Central Valley, living in Merced and working, you know, on projects like Dos Rios and others along the river. And um, the drought has me really concerned. I'm sure you guys as well. Um, looking at the river just today, it's choked, you know, with hyacinth and, um, you know, invasive plants like wall to wall. I mean, bank to bank. We We've really over allocated those water resources and we really don't have any resilience to get through another year of drought. I'm, I'm concerned, I'm deeply concerned. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about that um, in this slide deck that I prepared for you tonight. So um, I suppose with that, I will go ahead and start. Um, what I've got for you today is a number of really beautiful photos that I would like to kind of bring you into Dos Rios. I have a short video even linked in here that you can enjoy with me. It's just a couple minutes long, but it lets you feel like a bird at Dos Rios, which is fun. Um, <clears throat> and like I said, please, you know, stop me for any kind of questions. I'll try to keep my eye on that chat button at the top if somebody wants to type in, um, but I can't promise I'm going to see it. So please take yourself off mute and interject if you have something you want to add. Um, all right, so as Sal was pointing out, it's been 10 years. Um, in May of 2012 is when River Partners was able to finally acquire Dos Rios Ranch, the full fee title. It had been about eight years of work prior to 2012 just to get all of the pieces in place to actually buy Dos Rios Ranch. So at the moment of acquisition was a big deal and we threw a big party out there. It was fun. There's a couple hundred people in a big tent down by the confluence. <laughs> There's the program, Sal's waving to you guys. Um, <clears throat> and we had a lot of good speakers and just, you know, really enjoyed um, being out at the ranch. But that was before we did a lick of restoration. It was just celebrating the acquisition and the future restoration. So this October, we're going to be throwing a new party. You guys will see some save the dates coming out soon. Um, it'll be the 10 year celebration. And we're really, really proud of this. It might not seem like, I mean, 10 years seems like a long time, but to us, it's kind of light speed that in 10 years, we've been able to restore most of that property. So it's gone from corn and winter wheat or alfalfa production into native riparian and floodplain forests. It's really quite lovely. 
and it took a lot of work, <laughs> lots and lots of people, so many partners. Um, I hesitate to even talk about the project now because it's impossible to name everybody who's contributed along the way to make it real. So um, please know that as we talk about this project, this isn't like River Partners did this. This is we all did this together and River Partners gets to play the really fun role <laughs> of owning the property, owning that risk and um, you know, leading on revegetation and restoration work. Um, so before I get started, anybody know what bird is in River Partners logo? Have we ever talked about that with Audubon here? I'm, I'm guessing a swallow, a barn swallow. I'm just guessing. It is a swallow, but it's not a barn swallow. It's an artistic representation of a bank swallow. Bank swallow. <laughs> One would not know. I was looking at the forked tail. Yeah, it's just, it's a swallow. It's definitely a swallow. So we selected the bank swallow as the logo for River Partners, and the logo has not really changed um, in the history of River Partners, uh, because bank swallow represents a bird that relies upon a dynamic river. Bank swallows need channel meander. They need eroding banks and deposits. They need native vegetation. They represent a bird that needs kind of all of the different features of a river that works. And in the Central Valley, most of our rivers are really channelized and really controlled and banks are armored and you just don't get the kind of dynamics that help us have, you know, the, the native ecology of the valley. So bank swallow is almost like a target um, for restoration for most of our work. It's like if, if you could have bank swallows moving back in, you've done a good job. Um, there's about 26 maybe colonies of bank swallows left all on the Sacramento River. Um, there's, they're extirpated from the San Joaquin Valley as far as I know. <laughs> you guys tell me if you know different. Um, and you know they're at risk of um, being rocked over still. Just the few colonies that we know about left in the Sacramento Valley uh, just a couple years ago one of them got rocked over. You'd think with the complex permitting that we have around rivers and water in California that wouldn't happen but here we are. So <clears throat> for today's program, these are the few things that I want to answer these questions, and hopefully this is, you know, loyal to the description you read, but who's River Partners, a few slides on that, uh, talk about the flow of the Dos Rios project, uh, talk a little bit generally about how do we think about restoring a river, the outcomes um, that are really exciting about the last 10 years here in Stanislaus County on the river, and then a little bit of talk about kind of climate change in the future, um, and a little bit about the past. So quickly, for those of you who've not met River Partners before, you don't know us, this picture of some of our um, team kind of illustrates who River Partners is. We, we think a lot about restoring rivers together, and then we are farmers. So we farm, we just don't farm crops, we farm native habitat. So um, these images are a real good illustration of what we do. We try to do things at scale. We try to use agricultural techniques to establish native vegetation back in disturbed areas, um, which means we own a bunch of tractors <laughs> and trailers and gators. Um, when we are reforesting, we're reforesting on the scale of hundreds of acres at a time. Um, and it takes a lot of logistics to do that. And frankly, we've never met anybody who can handle the logistics of a big planting like that, like farmers from the Central Valley can. <laughs> so our operations team is populated by people who grew up farming. Um, our operations director grew up farming organic tomatoes in Chowchilla. Um, we have a, a host of um, field foremen um, who oversee crews and most of them are also farmers from the Central Valley. Um, and it's a really, um, uh, it's really interesting to watch that it's not just the skills that you gained as a, as a young farmer in the Central Valley that help you be really good at the logistics of doing projects like this, uh, but it's also the networks. So it's been really cool to watch that somebody, you know, who's farming for River Partners might call up his dad or his grandpa to try to figure out an answer to an irrigation system question, you know, and their dad or grandpa might be fairly conservative or not really get what this is about farming for native habitat, but they're excited to fix the problem and excited to see us move forward. So a uh, cool place to be for sure. Um, I did not grow up farming. I grew up in the Bay Area, but I've always um, loved this element of the culture at River Partners. Um, <clears throat> real quickly, our mission is to create wildlife habitat for the benefit of people in the environment. Um, that's been our mission since we were founded in 1998. It has not changed. We don't, we don't try to revisit it. It's simple. It's clear. Um, we're trying to do things that are good for both wildlife and for people. Um, our vision is written out here. And um, the fun thing about this vision is that we actually put the, the thought into not just writing out the various um, components of a healthy river that we think uh, we'd love to see happen on the landscape, but also we put them into it almost like a priority. So 
we envision thriving rivers and floodplains that enhance surrounding communities, right? And that sustain wildlife and that support farmland and that preserve our freshwater and that serve as an, a first line of ecological defense in a changing climate. Um, in that picture, you can see some of our staff birding. Uh, they're up in Redding at a brand new installed river restoration project, taking a look at who's, who's living there today. Uh, this is just a couple pages out of our annual report. I encourage you, if you want to learn more about our organization, to check out. We have a couple of annual reports on the website, which is riverpartners.org. Um, this is one of from our, our 2021 impact report, which just shows you kind of graphically where River Partners works in the state of California. Um, our, our approach to river restoration works best in agricultural areas. You can see the big blobs are on, you know, the Central Valley. Um, although we do work in Southern California, a little bit more in Imperial Valley as well. And then we like to think of ourselves as impact oriented. So we track things like not, not just acres of restoration, but how many river miles, how many native trees and shrubs, um, tons of greenhouse gases, gallons of water conserved. Um, we even like to think about the function of um, most of the work we do is grant funded. We, we compete for these grant funds and then deliver them in communities that maybe don't usually compete for um, state or federal dollars like that. Uh, so we like to think about also our organization's role in bringing resources to kind of resource poor areas at times. Um, <clears throat> just to give you a, a hint about our financials, this is the last five years, our income expense and assets. So you can see a couple years ago, we took a bit of a step step up in activity and um we've you know our organization has been designed to scale rapidly so we're pretty excited about what the coming years have in store for river restoration just because everybody from the local state national even global level is saying you know we have to do a whole lot more and we have to do it quickly river partners is designed to scale um so i just wanted to mention that in that step up from fiscal year 19 to 20 when we doubled our annual revenues we felt almost no you know um impact of that in the organization is easy to to scale up easy to hire easy to deliver more outcomes we're excited about scaling up to do more and then real quickly, and we're not going to digest this, but these are the donuts that just show kind of where our money comes from and how we spend it. So where our money comes from on the left-hand side, the revenues, mostly state and federal grants and contracts. Um, our organization is largely um, funded by public dollars. And um, we like to think of ourselves as a um, entrepreneurial nonprofit. Um, so we have a contractor's license for landscaping. So we actually do compete for bid work that's consistent with our mission. And when we make money off that bid work, we use that to pay the deficit in grant funds for grants that were awarded. So we kind of, you know, uh, pay the piper with with grants and contracts. Um, and then our expenses were really project oriented, you know, so the blue on there is restoration projects and then the gray is land management. You can see we spend a lot of our time and money on specifically managing and restoring uh, lands and rivers. Um, our story about those Rios begins in 1997. Um, so 1997 was a huge flood year, right? The levees broke all over the San Joaquin Valley. There's 17 levee breaks. And um, what happened as a result of all of that destruction is the Army Corps of Engineers went out and asked people, do you want us to repair your levee or should we do something different? And something different means maybe buy flow adjustments instead of repair the levee. And in... Uh, the years following the 1997 flood, there were three big landowners who said, yeah, we don't want to repair the levee. And in fact, if somebody wants to buy this garbagey land that we've been farming, please do. <laughs> we are tired of recovering after big floods. So the San Joaquin River National Wildlife Refuge purchased over 3,000 acres south of Highway 132 um, that uh, came to be known as the Three Amigos Project, these three landowners who didn't want to maintain the levees anymore. Um, after this Fish and Wildlife Service purchased those lands, they called up River Partners, who at the time was just called Sacramento River Partners, had just been founded in 1998, brand new organization. But we knew the service from some of the projects we had done up there and from some you know, professional history of some of our founders. So the Fish and Wildlife Service called us up and said, hey, would you come down to Modesto and check this out? We need to restore a lot of ground. And I think it's probably going to take a farming approach. Would you come look and see? So our board of directors traveled to Modesto, looked around and said, Mm -hmm. Yeah, we can do this. Let's open an office. So in 2000 is when we opened an office in Modesto and began working with the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service to restore those 3,000 acres that um, became known as the West Unit of the San Joaquin River National Wildlife Refuge. And they, uh, you've probably been out there birding on the Pelican Nature Trail. 
Um, so you've walked through some of the restoration projects we've done over the years out there. Uh, we even raised the money to do the Pelican Nature Trail and work with the service to design it and install it and the information kiosks and things that are out there. It's been a super productive relationship. Um, Kim Forrest, the refuge complex manager, um, has always been this just huge supporter of our partnership and our work. And uh, we've been able to recruit a whole lot of dollars to help build out that refuge um, as a result of really productive partnership. So um, uh, one of our strongest, you know, in the state in, in all of River Partners portfolio. So you've seen this map before, Sal, it's on your little program that you're holding, but this is just to orient us about where the Dos Rios project is that I'm going to talk about next. Um, so you can see Modesto over there, the Tuolumne and Dry Creek running through. Um, and right at the bottom of the Tuolumne River, the lower three miles uh, runs along the north edge of Dos Rios Ranch, which is that purple puzzle piece nestled in amongst the rest of the green of the San Joaquin River National Wildlife Refuge. So in so we had been working with the service at the National Wildlife Refuge for a long time when um, the Tuolumne River Trust called us up and said, hey, um, you know, there's this keystone piece of the Lower Tuolumne Parkway um, that we've been talking to a landowner about and he might want to sell it. And um, we're, you know, we're wondering if you want to partner on it. I'm not sure that we're going to be able to own it. I'm not sure that we're going to be able to get all the money. It's going to be like 20 or $30 million, but we want to try. Would you like to partner? So we entered into partnership with the Tuolumne River Trust and began raising money to buy Dos Rios Ranch took a number of years, <laughs> um, but we were able to raise uh, what turned out to be $21.8 million uh, to buy the 1,600-acre Dos Rios Ranch from the Lyons family. Um, Mapes Ranch and the historic ownership of the Lyons family is mostly north of Highway 132 in this area um, within the boundary of the San Joaquin River Refuge, but um, they do own land south of 132 as well. So, <clears throat> Uh, shortly thereafter, I'm saying like six months after we bought Dos Rios Ranch, the neighbors to the south raised their hand and said, hey, you know, that deal kind of worked out well for the Lions family. Would you maybe want to buy our dairy as well? And we took a look and it's really flood prone dairy called Hidden Valley Ranch or Hidden Valley Dairy, um, all primary floodplain of Samokin River. So we said, sure. And in record speed, I think it took about four months, we found another nine million bucks from the state to buy that property. So now together, those two properties are what we refer to as Dos Rios Ranch, 2,100 acres, and it's all the primary floodplain of the San Joaquin River there. Um, so what ownership of both of those parcels allows us to do is actually modify the flood control system here to improve um, inundation of floodplain lands when the rivers do get high, which seems like a dream right now. <laughs> so I'm gonna play a little video for you, just you know, so you feel like a bird flying through Dos Rios Ranch. Uh, we put this together just a couple years ago, and um, uh, hopefully uh, this is, this displays well for you all. We're not seeing movement, Julie. Yep. Is it not playing? No, you have to click on to hear the music, but you don't see the action. Click on to it. Sorry, hang on a second. It's sharing the wrong item. Here we go. Is that going now?
logo came up. There you go. All right. Thanks for humoring me. I just love watching it. It's so fun. Um, okay. It's so a little bit about orientation around the restoration project. We had to, of course, do this restoration project in phases um, because uh, its logistics uh, are challenging and it's, it's pretty expensive. So the red line here on the, the Dos Rios Ranch zoomed in map is the federal flood control levy. So the property is basically split in half between lands that are on the water side of the federal flood control levy and lands that are on the land side or the dry side of the levy. And so permitting is different on those types of lands. Um, permitting for lands on the dry side of the levy does not require permission from the Central Valley Flood Protection Board and Army Corps of Engineers and land on the wet side of the levy does. So we knew we would start restoring land in the yellow phases here. And we're very excited the first year out the gate, as soon as we bought this property, we were able to start getting trees in the ground. And about 500 acres of Dos Rios Ranch was planted in that very first year, 2013. Um, so that's how old the oldest trees are out there from the restoration project. And they look you know, pretty large and pretty beautiful at this moment. Um, and we'll continue uh, developing over the next decades, which is really fun to see. Um, we then took about five years of really fun activity permitting <laughs> and getting through all of a lot of, you know, regulatory hurdles um, to get permission to do the restoration project on the fields that are red and green, and then eventually purple. So purple was just planted last year um, and it's just starting to grow up. Um, <clears throat> we have not yet moved to that dairy to the south of this property, the Hidden Valley Dairy, but we're um, expecting to break ground on the Hidden Valley Dairy restoration projects as early as January of this year, um, or January of next year, sorry, so very excited about that. <clears throat> I could take you through the boring details of permitting, but I know you guys don't want to hear about that. Um, <clears throat> I like to tell the story about the public investment at Dos Rios Ranch because this is, you know, it's it's all of our dollars contributing to the outcomes out there, and um, it's important to kind of see how our dollars move through all of our bureaucracy. So, by funding source um, dollars to do the project at Dos Rios, and these numbers include both acquisition and restoration. Um, came from mostly state dollars, just a little bit over half came from the state of California, and then a significant portion, more than a quarter, came from the federal, federal programs. Um, there were some local and private dollars um, that hit the, hit the project as well, that's from the San Francisco Public Utilities Commission, um, and then about six million left to go to fundraise, that includes the restoration at the hidden, excuse me, at the Hidden Valley Dairy. And then what's even more interesting is if you think about it by uh, by program focus. So the money that was spent here at this project came from flood, from wildlife habitat, from recreation, from water quality, from agricultural programs, and some that we have yet to identify. And so to think about this project as serving the needs of a whole bunch of different focus areas, I think is um, fascinating. It's challenging to put together this many different kinds of programs and this many different kinds of interests, but it builds coalitions that are uh, robust. Um, so that's been a, an interesting learning process, I think, for all of us in um, California to see what happens when you put together multiple benefits, stacked multiple benefits like that in one project. Um, so <laughs> the um, the uh, effect of some projects like Dos Rios Ranch and others that have all those stacked benefits like that. Um, it's been really fascinating to see, but the Department of Water Resources in 2018 um, reorganized and actually created a new division that's called the Division of Multi-Benefit Initiatives, which is an entire division inside the Department of Water Resources dedicated to delivering projects like this that deliver the combination of, you know, water supply, flood control, wildlife habitat, recreation, all of those things stacked together. So that's that's been fun to watch. Uh, quickly, I think you guys would be really interested to hear about this, um, or maybe you've spent a lot of time thinking about it already, but this is um, one of the earlier maps of the San Joaquin River National Wildlife Refuge um, Boundary Expansion Project. So this expansion was signed uh, by Dan Ash right before the beginning of the Trump administration. So I think it was like January 17th <laughs> of 2017. And um, what this boundary expansion did is it, as you can see on the map here, expanded the boundary of the San Joaquin River National Wildlife Refuge all the way down to the confluence with the Merced River. And um, the uh, boundaries that you see on here are a little bit diffuse, um, but the service, the Fish and Wildlife Service now has the authority 
to work with willing landowners in the entire geography you see here, going up the Tuolumne and Stanislaus rivers, as well as all the way down the main stem of the San Joaquin River to buy properties and turn them into conservation properties. Um, this kind of authority for the service is a really big deal. Um, and, the, and Kim Forrest in particular has been working since 2017 to um, find those willing landowners and do conservation deals. Um, so Dos Rios Ranch, um, you can see is kind of in the heart of that expanded refuge boundary. Uh, we all kind of imagined that Dos Rios would, would become part of the refuge. Uh, we've transferred a couple of properties to refuge ownership already um, since this boundary expansion was put into place, but Dos Rios became one that was kind of challenging to do. And it wasn't until earlier this year, State Parks reached out to us and asked us if we'd like to um, work with them to transfer Dos Rios Ranch into State Parks ownership. Uh, so that was a bit of a curveball we weren't expecting, but we were really excited about the opportunity to bring a different state agency to the table, um, to bring different capacities here in the local area, and especially an agency that has capacities in managing visitation and public access. It's always been a bit of a challenge here because we don't have river partners, of course, doesn't have capacity to manage a lot of public access on the property. And um, while the resources here are very sensitive, um, we're excited about the opportunity to share them with the public more readily once state parks actually takes ownership. So um, let's see. Uh, the other thing I want to show you is this is a map of our flood system in the area. So a big part of why we were able to deliver money to Dos Rios Ranch is because it improves a failing flood system. Same with the San Joaquin River National Wildlife Refuge. Um, conservation actions here have improved a failing flood system by modifying levees or reconnecting floodplains or replacing levees with flowage easements in the area. So as River Partners thinks about our work in Stanislaus County, we think about these yellow and red spaces as priority conservation areas. Those are places where we will be able to attract additional investment of the scale that, that can help us do this kind of reconnection work, long-term vision. So I'm gonna skip ahead to the wildlife stuff because I know that's what you guys love, but I did wanna point out that uh, the Dos Rios project made it to the cover of the Central Valley Flood Protection Plan this year. So the this is the plan for the entire Central Valley from Redding to frankly, to Bakersfield. Um, Dos Rios Ranch is on the cover as an illustration of just validation from the state about this approach being the way that the flood protection community wants to go for the Central Valley. It's a real validation of our work. <clears throat> groundwater. Um, I'll just talk very quickly about groundwater outcomes. We're, we're trying to study what happens when the river overbanks and spreads across these miles wide floodplains. Um, that are now much wider than they used to be because we've breached levees and berms and allow the water to spread out more, more fully. Does it soak in locally and then just drain back to the river quite quickly? Does it soak into deeper aquifers? You know, what's the fate of that groundwater and can we call it recharge? Does it just charge the root zone of the riparian area or does it do something more? And so to study that, we've um, had um, researchers from Stan State and we're starting to work with folks from Lawrence Livermore, water chemists, and um, the geophysicist at Sanford to try to characterize uh, what the, the soil textures look like across the wide floodplains here, and they're very variable. So this is just one illustration of one transect that was driven across with ground penetrating sonar, showing you that there's like, you know, this wide variety of, they call it resistivity or uh, textural classifications of the soils at depth. Um, we're learning a lot, but we still have so much we need to figure out about um, what happens to the water that spreads across the landscape here. Okay, so wildlife. River Partners, you know, um, thinks about the entire suite of wildlife, not just birds, <laughs> although birds are close to our heart and part of our logo. Um, so some of the um, target species that have been in the phases of restoration of Dos Rios Ranch include, of course, riparian brush rabbits and riparian wood rats which are state endangered and federally endangered mammals um, that live mostly in the um, South Delta and lower part of the San Joaquin system. And we've had some great successes recovering those critters over the years. Um, we, of course, target a lot of our work towards riparian neotropical songbirds. So here's a picture of Elise Bell's Vireo, uh, but there are a number of other uh, neotropes that we um, hope to find in the restored forest and nesting in trees that we've planted out there. Uh, we don't, as Sal and I were just talking about at the beginning of this, we don't have enough boots on the ground listening. You know, we need more birders out there telling us what's living in these restored forests. 
we've spent a lot of time and energy in the logistics part and in the cultivating part. We're growing these forests up, but we don't have a lot of resources and time and experts to tell us how many birds are moving in, what their conservation status is. Is there a heavy presence of cowbirds or pressure on cowbirds? Um, which you'd presume there is because this is dairy country. Um, and so, you know, we could really use your help to get out there and, and count birds. Um, and I'll talk a little bit more about that in a minute. Um, everybody cares a lot about salmon, right? Salmon kind of drive a lot of the water conversation in California and at Dos Rios Ranch, we've been able to do a few studies where we actually put pens out on the flooded floodplain and put uh, fish from the hatchery into those pens and measure how they grow as they're feeding on insects and bugs and things on the floodplain soils. And um, just like the research you maybe have seen from the Yolo Bypass or other places where researchers have done these fish on floodplain studies, um, salmon that, grew, that gets to access the floodplains at places like Dos Rios can grow fatter, faster, right? They grow much bigger, much faster than fish that only have fast moving water in a river channel. And um, bigger fish have a likelihood, a higher likelihood of surviving as they out migrate through the Delta. Um, so we're really excited about that outcome, but we need a lot more floodplains if we're gonna make a difference for our salmon population. Monarch butterflies, we've been able to do some specific milkweed plantings at Dos Rios and we've actually seen a response. The insect people tell us, you know, just because you have more numbers at Dos Rios this year than last year doesn't really mean anything because butterfly populations are responsive to all kinds of influences all over California from the coast to the valley. Uh, but we still feel pretty proud that the milkweed plants that we've planted, um, a lot of them are now hosting caterpillars and growing butterflies, so it's exciting. And then I got to add a new critter to the list just yesterday it, when our field operations team uh, identified successfully a Western pond turtle at Dos Rios Ranch in the water. So we don't know how it got there. We've done a few specific surveys for Western pond turtles and never found them. Uh, but sure enough, we now have at least one, <laughs> presumably more, Western pond turtles living at Dos Rios. Um, a quick note about rabbit hemorrhagic disease. This is on our minds at Dos Rios Ranch and probably those folks who visited yet to sterilize tires and shoes, but um, this is a, a kind of parallel to COVID for people. Um, this virus has spread like wildfire across California from the south to the north. The highly high mortality rate for all rabbits and hares um, and it has been detected at Dos Rios Ranch. So what you see here is an image of some of our partners vaccinating rabbits. There's a, there's a vaccination for this virus. So we've actually done rabbit trapping and vaccination. We used to joke that the rabbits got a vaccine before people did for COVID, <laughs> taking good care of our bunnies. Um, all right, so this is what I wanna to talk to you guys about, eBird. Um, how many people here use eBird? I presume you guys are eBirders, yes. So when we look at the, um, you know, the, the hot spots on the map in this area, I see, which is really cool, Dos Rios Ranch proposed state park located or identified here on the map, which is great, but I don't really see any hotspots. And it's probably because the property's not open and it has been very difficult to get you know, permission to go out there. And the, the restoration project has been very active. Um, we see cool hotspots all, you know, um, if you look up along the Stanislaus River there on those properties that are managed by the US Fish and Wildlife Service um, around Pelican Nature Trail, um, and the bird lists coming out of all of your observations are just so astounding and impressive and inspiring, right? Um, so I really hope <laughs> that when I'm talking to this group in a year or two, we see tons of dots all over uh, Dos Rios and Hidden Valley here, and we can, we can have a much better understanding about what birds are out there. Um, <clears throat> I was going to open up the bird list, but I'm not going to spend the time. You guys can see eBird too, but I just wanted to point out that for one of these dots, you know, close by, which is like this portion of the refuge right here, pretty close to Dos Rios, there's over 190, there's 195 species that have been listed, over 200 uh, bird lists. I mean, this is really amazing data. This is not like casual citizen science. This is deep data <laughs> that's been pr produced by birders like yourselves um, over the years. And so I cannot wait to see um, what we learn about those Rios Ranch when we have better access and it's easier for folks like you to come visit. So <clears throat> um, River Partners a number of years ago wrote a California Riparian Restoration Handbook. Um, and just want to show you a couple highlights from this. While we all think about the restoration project, or maybe the part that's most moving about it when we go visit a project, is seeing the trees in the forest grow. 
And this is a really nice illustration of what it looks like from planting to year three. Um, the trees get big fast. <laughs> um, what's actually kind of more important is this underlying dynamics that I mentioned before about channel meander and giving the river space to move around. So uh, the San Joaquin River National Wildlife Refuge and Dos Rios Ranch comprise over 5,000 acres of primary floodplain of the San Joaquin River that are now completely compatible with river meander. And it's a really big deal to allow the river to move around because it sustains the restored habitats that we've created and it makes new microhabitats for, for lots of other species. So um, when we think about, wow, this is a really big floodplain or wow, this is a lot of acres, um, a lot of the hydrologists we work with think about it as that's a lot of channel meander potential, <laughs> which is very exciting. Um, this illustration, which many of you have seen, it's been around for I think 20 years and it was originally drawn by a, a, an employee at Point Blue or at the time it was PRBO, um, is kind of our Bible for bird restoration. You know, every new biologist at River Partners who helps design a project looks at this constantly and thinks, how can I design a restoration project that's implementable, right, with our farming techniques and our tractors and our irrigation systems, <laughs> but also creates these various, you know, seeks to create these various um, diversity of habitat types that speak to all of these different birds. And um, it's been really amazing to watch the creativity of so many biologists who come up with good ideas about where we can find, you know, blackberry scrub areas that are going to persist over time and where we can create marshes that would benefit tricolors. Um, and then learn lots of lessons, right? Because plants and water are never predictable. <laughs> we learn a lot of lessons along the way about what works and what doesn't. Um, so I'm going to skip ahead to kind of a, a couple of punchlines here. I think, um, let me stop sharing. I'll, I'll start sharing again in just a moment. I think some of you are probably on the distribution list for the storage response group. And so you might have seen that just today there was a New York Times article that's very relevant to us all in this conversation about um, rivers in the Central Valley. Oops, sorry. I think I did that wrong. I'll try again. <clears throat> okay. So published today, August 12th, Raymond Zong, and the headline is The Coming California Megastorm. The big one is approaching. Climate change is hastening its arrival. And so functionally, what this is, is um, researchers at Scripps, at UCLA, um, uh, even some Department of Water Resources uh, folks are all, um, well, there's been a big um, article published in Nature, but it had actually has the modeling results of a lot of big thinkers. And what it shows is the Central Valley has a history of every 100 to 200 years having these um, earth shaking flood events. And we're talking about feet of sediment deposited in the bottom of the Central Valley on a frequency of about one to 200 years as a result of fluvial movement from the Sierra Nevada into the bottom of the Central Valley. And the climate modeling that's been done by the state of California, our Department of Water Resources and the governor's office and the Natural Resources Agency has us seeing at least a threefold, maybe more, increase in flooding intensity over the next um, 30 years. And the reason for that is because the storms that hit the Sierra Nevadas, especially in the San Joaquin Valley, are going to be warmer. Um, they're going to be pulling warmer moisture out of the ocean. And when they hit the Sierra Nevada, they're going to fall as rain and not snow. Um, so, so we're thinking, wow, we have a really big flood problem. 1997 was transformational for this landscape. And what's coming next is going to be even bigger. Um, we have a much bigger population now than we did then. Uh, Stockton has kind of exploded and um, we have a lot, a much higher um, like damage estimate um, from all of this flooding. So we, River Partners really relies on this storytelling as a justification or an illustration about why these floodplains are so important to people and for public investment. Um, but <laughs> taking you all the way back to over 100 years ago, in September 1914, um, we're constantly keeping our eye on this issue that, you know, the Central Valley transformed rapidly um, from a very um, rich and diverse wet landscape into what it is today through our period of reclamation. And projects like Dos Rios Ranch are a chance to go back a little bit, unwind just a little bit 
of that reclamation that was done and try to recreate some of what was lost. So this is actually an article from the Condor <laughs> from 1914. And what it describes, if you can't read the small text on here, it's, it's called Notes on a Colony of Tricolored Red Wings. And it's a description. It says, um, it's a description of a, a tricolored colony, the most, um, the largest in the San Joaquin Valley that year. And it's located on the Rancho Dos Rios in Stanislaus County, California. Uh, this, this little two-page article goes on to describe the abundance of the birds, how they're feeding on grasshoppers that are abundant in the surrounding landscape, and um, how this population in this wetland at Dos Rios Ranch um, is the biggest in the valley. The the slough that's named in here is the slough is a slough that we're working to restore right now, and um, we don't have tricolors nesting there just yet, but we're very hopeful um, that we will be. You know, it took a hundred years or so to annihilate this this population, and I think it'll probably only take a couple more decades to get them back. So I'll stop there. I'll stop sharing and look at your faces again and see if you had any questions for me or other things you wanted to talk about.